And hello there, everybody. Welcome back once again with Megan and I watching through the various years of E3. Yay. We're doing it. Yeah, yeah, we're doing it. Megan, you don't need to sound so unenthused. You're having fun. You're enjoying yourself. You've made that clear to me. Listen, I'm pretty sure you did. I mean, yeah, I didn't mean to make me sound unenthused. Yay. I thought I put more expression into that. I'm just tired, okay? <laughs> I mean, I get it, and I don't blame you. So we are back with the part two for the various game store video game stuff. I'm still not entirely sure what this is meant for, but it's this video game store in the title by old E3 VHS videos once again. So we're going to be watching part two of that. I believe we're still on the Dreamcast. I believe so. So Megan, are you ready? Yeah. Wait. Ooh, another racing game. Another racing game, dude. Hold on, I'm new to the site. Ooh. So it's not GP. Ah, uh, this one seems yeah. different at least. It's very cartoon. Well, arcadey. I do like how you're. It's you're also very clearly racing an RC car. I was gonna say it, it looks like you're doing RC car racing, which admittedly is a little different. I'll give them that. Yeah, that is a little that different. Is it's still like the fourth or fifth racing game we've seen from Dreamcast so far. That was pretty sick, though. That was pretty sick, actually. Oh, he flipped for like no reason. He did. On the tube. Oh. Clearly, the physics in the RC car are a little bit wonky. Uh, potentially. That's kind of a good point, though. I'm surprised we haven't got more, like, RC car type racing games. Um, I mean, there were a few back in the day. I guess there haven't really been that much lately, though, eh? No. It's all about, like, realistic racing. I like racers. Races. I didn't even know they had a game like this. I didn't know either, but it makes sense. I mean, yeah, I suppose. Although, admittedly, it is a little bit strange that they have a property from, like, what, the 60s? As, like, a racing game in the 2000s. But I guess Wacky Races was kind of, like, still on some TV stations, I think. Well, yeah, it was. So you get to choose, like, one power-up? I guess. Maybe yeah. to start with. Which makes sense for wacky rate races. And I guess each car would have its own special, unique type of power-ups. Which sounds yeah. fun. It looks pretty good, though. Again, it looks like when you pick up that stuff, you get some of your power-ups. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You used to watch Wacky, Wacky Races all the time, too. It was a really, really fun show. Yeah, I remember seeing a little bit of it. I don't think I ended up watching a lot of it, though. No, Prince, Prince of Persia. Persia. Prince of Persia 3D. Oh, so they did a remake of the original? Is that what this is? I guess. I guess, yeah, it's definitely is in Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Unless this is just yeah. a prototype to that. That's true. I guess it could have been delayed, because I came up pretty early in the PS2 lifespan, didn't it? Uh, it, yeah, I believe so. I'm just gonna see if my phone's, like, actually charged so I can, like, check. Because currently <laughs> my phone, my phone, uh, was dead. I thought I was charging it, but I guess the, the charger fell out. Um. Oh. But I did have a charger for a bit, because I'm kind of curious about this one. Vanishing Point. I think I've heard of this game, too. I want to say I've heard of Vanishing Point. Okay, so mine is mostly charged. So, let me have a look at Prince of Persia 3D. Well, we see another racing game, of course. See, even we got Wacky yeah. Races, though. Another racing game. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, Dreamcast. They must have been playing it really safe with Dreamcast. Yeah. Probably a little too safe. Probably. Just like, oh, why would you buy a Dreamcast when you can get a PlayStation 2 and get so much more variety in your games? Mm. 
Oh. Oh. So apparently, under North in North America, it came out as the Prince of Persia Arabian Nights. Oh, it's that one. Okay. I don't know if it's the Arabian Nights one that I know of, and that I'm sure you're thinking of, but it also might be. Let me see here. I mean, it might be. Oh no, this actually might be that one. I mean, if that's the case, then it's a good meme. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and then they rebooted the series with Ubisoft. Oh, they oh they sold the rights to Ubisoft, I guess. That makes sense. Okay, well, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, I so didn't know that one. either. I'll bleed. I think so, or Ill Bleed, maybe? Maybe Ill Bleed. Seems to be like a horror game based on what we've seen so far. Yeah, like shooting. Kind of trying to be a yeah. bit like Resident Evil, but not really pulling it off. Or Silent Hill. Or Silent Hill, or like a mixture of both to a degree, I guess. Yeah. I guess it's more like Silent Hill with the camera kind of like following the character, but kind of like more Resident Evil-ish in the fact that it's mostly guns. Yeah. I when I think of Silent Hill, I think like all melee weapons. Alien front. Okay. Hmm. Seems interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, a mech shooter game. Looks fun. So one thing I'm kind of noticing with the Dreamcast at this point, though, is mm -hmm. a lot of Dreamcast games seem like, at least the ones for this year, besides them just being racers, I think even a couple of ones from last year, I don't quite remember, they seem a lot like a game you would see like a year or two prior, you know? Mm, that's true. Because like, this seems like a game that would have came out in like 98 or something, you know? Yeah. But then you have Nintendo and Sony, and it's like, maybe it's just because I, I, I've i actually played on Sony and Nintendo 64, or well, PlayStation and Nintendo 64, yeah. so I'm a little biased, maybe. That could be it. But I just see maybe. their games, and I'm like, yeah, you know, modern, trying new stuff, you know? Yeah. But then I see Dreamcast, and I'm like, well, yeah, it's just something I would have seen, like, probably in 98, <laughs> to be honest. Oh. Eternal Arcadia. Eternal Arcadia. I think I've heard I of this one. I wonder if this is from the same franchise as like Legends of Arcadia, because I heard that's a pretty cool, or Skies of Arcadia, one of the two. It's like a GameCube JRPG. I heard it's pretty good. Oh, uh, let me see. Oh, it was ported to the GameCube in 2003. Oh, okay, so maybe they just ported it. Uh. Yeah, it, it it yeah. So when I looked at Paternal Arcadia, I'm getting Skies of Arcadia. Yeah. Okay. So they must have ported it and then changed the name. They might have even just changed the name, to be honest, because I think even under Dreamcast, it's still called um, Skies of Arcadia. That's fair. Which yeah, I, I guess, heard this game was cool. Yeah, I, I've heard that too. And honestly, I think the name change kind of makes sense because it looks like being in the sky is kind of very important. Or at least yeah. a, a very big thing in this game, considering they've been here yeah. this whole time so far. So I could see it making sense to go from, okay, Eternal Arcadia. Yeah, I mean, that sounds okay, but Skies of Arcadia. That kind of sounds a bit yeah. more epic and adventurous too, you know? It does. No, this is definitely on my list to own one day. Oh yeah, so the port for the GameCube is called um, Skies of Arcadia Legends. So that is probably what you're thinking of. Probably. <laughs> hmm. 
Yeah, I do like games in this kind of style too. Yeah. But that might be because it, it kind of reminds me of like Mega Man Legends, interestingly enough. It kinda gives I mean, up it does look a lot like model. the same art style. Yeah. So I, I see that and I'm like, oh, want to play Mega Man Legends? We'll get to it one day. Yeah, I know. I, like, I, I do plan on picking it up at some point. Like, I've seen it in numerous places. That's kind of why I'm not in like a super big rush, because like it doesn't seem that hard to get. Um, no, just a little expensive. Yeah, kind of same with Digimon World 2 as well. Like I've seen that in a couple places too, and I want to get that one because then that would, besides four, that would fill up my Digimon World collection. Because I have one and three. Okay. Um. But yeah, those ones I can just kind of get whenever, really. But we will get them one day for sure, and then I'll also have you play them as well, I'm sure. And then I can be like, see, Megan, see, why why did they why did they not give me Legends 3, Megan? I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. It's like, if Capcom can fix, like, their reputation with me. Like, I mean, they're, they're a good company again with uh, all the good remakes they've done for video games, like for their games. But <laughs> they're not going to be completely cool with me until, well, I'm not going to be completely cool with them, I guess I should say. Until I get Legends 3. Give me Mega Man Legends 3, please. Armada 2. Nah, not, not too much show for Armada 2 by the looks of it. Seems not. An 18 wheeler, huh? I do find it interesting that like trick games were just kind of like a thing back then as well, but they're more yeah, like a race to the end kind of trek game. Unlike what we get now, which is just simulator stuff, right? Yeah. Cause like even the other game that I actually got a shoot, how long ago now was it? Um, I got a uh, big mother truckers like a few months back, I think. Which is very yeah. similar to this, except it's a lot more, I guess, quirky. Where the whole thing is like, oh, you know, you buy your buy what you want to put in your truck and then you go as fast as you can to like a sell off location. Yeah, I'm trying to make some money that way. Well, he didn't really have much time, did he? Legacy of Kane 2. That's on Dreamcast. Apparently. Well, I think the first one was also on Dreamcast, so they must have got That's ported it. at some point. Maybe. I could not say. I've not played either of those games. Or any of those Neither games. Neither have I. We should. We should definitely get them sometime, though. Yeah. Fantasy Star Online, legendary game. Yeah. Not really much to say. Uh, I never played it. Uh, a little bit of the second one I did play. And I could see the appeal. Yeah, I mean, from what I have heard and seen of Fantasy Star, it always looked really cool. I just never played either of them. But, you know, even then, though, I can't really, um, 
say anything about how it, you know, cause it, uh, about like like you can't really shirk how good it actually is right because i know it is a legendary game even if i personally not had um much experience with it still like yeah. absolutely legendary for sure oh yeah for sure And I do like the graphical style. Yeah, it is a cool graphical style. I feel Megan's just like parrying everything I say. I'm not trying to. Come up with your own opinions, Megan. God. I don't have an opinion. I don't. I haven't played the game. Neat, they got like four different screens. I, I guess for each player. Probably. That's neat. That's a good way to showcase probably trying that. To sh yeah, probably trying to show how it works in actual multiplayer. Yeah. Although it does look like they're playing different classes too. So maybe each monitor has a different class by default i mean maybe like i don't know if those are actual like people playing it i don't know if that was the demo or not or if that was just like yeah i don't know like just a video because it could it could have very well just been like a video demo to showcase like well here's what the game is like right as opposed to a demo that you play yeah grandia 2 yeah i've only heard very good stuff about grandia 1 and 2 never played either of them but they are apparently very unique RPGs. I mean, I like the look. Yeah. It is on PS2 as well, at least the second and third one. I don't know about the first. That might be a young PlayStation. Well, but it, what about Dreamcast? I don't know. I don't look at Dreamcast stuff when we go to Retro Source. Uh, let's see. I'm oh, guessing last very expensive. Well, actually, it wasn't too bad, because, like, the last couple of times we went out, I've been considering getting it. I think two was, like, 50 or 60 bucks. Yeah, well, with the first one, you can't just play two without getting the first one. You know them rules. I mean, yeah. I'm kidding. There aren't okay. any rules, but... I don't know how rare the first one is. Oh, they have the, um, HD collection. Yeah, I don't remember if I bought that on Switch or not. I might have. Which is for the first one and the second one. So, that might be the way to play it. At least for us, maybe. Because I assume they're good. Yeah. I assume they're done well. Yeah, I've heard good things about the HD remaster, so. And Ready to Rumble. I did like the original Ready to Rumble. I don't know if I ever played around two. I might have. Both are very fun games, though. Just like your your nice uh, arcade style boxing game, you know. Yeah, I do like how they have the Midway logo just on the map. Yeah. You know, gotta represent. I know. It just it looks good. I do remember enjoying playing with the Afro dude. I don't remember his name. I don't know like any of the names of the characters. On Samba oh, de Amigo. Samba de Amigo. Well, that's kind of funny because we're getting a remake of this game coming out pretty soon after this video comes out. We are. Yeah, I never got to play any of the uh, Somebody Amigo, uh, yeah, the Somebody Amigo games, but they did seem pretty fun. I mean, I'll be honest. Until we got uh, news of the remaster, I didn't know they existed, but they're pretty cool. Like, I don't know. I I like my rhythm games. I've never really played one like this, mind you. But Power Stone Two. 
Of course, you get a game with Power Stone, you gotta have a Power Stone too, right? Considering Power Stone was a was a bit of a hit, right? I never heard of Power Stone. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. What rock have you been I living know, I'm uneducated. <laughs> it's on me now. That's a lot of power-ups really quickly, huh? Um, well, that's just the power stones, because I believe the thing with power stone is you knock them out of your opponent, and then you pick them up, and if you have them mo most more power stones, I think you win. Oh, okay, so it's one of those games. Or it gives... Oh, no, 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 I'm wrong. No, I think it gives you, like, a, a special power-up or something, and then you can use that to yeah. defeat your opponents. I think. Yeah, okay. I like how they just threw a, a mini-game in here, because why not? Because, like, I will say, I've never actually played Power Stone. I just know they're considered pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I might have to uh, give it a try sometime. Is it only on Dreamcast? Uh, I'm not too sure, to be honest with you. I can have a little peek. Okay. As I was say, I'm, I don't really want to get a Dreamcast. <laughs> I have enough systems to collect for. <laughs> I mean, I want to get a Dreamcast eventually. Because, Megan, the, the Dreamcast library isn't really that... I don't think it'd be, really be that big. Considering it was only out for like what a couple of years before they well, no, I don't think it'd be that big. It. I've just accepted that like between all the systems I own and possibly buying games for systems you own like the Xbox and the N64, I got enough systems to collect for. I don't need to add any more like the Genesis or the Dreamcast or whatever, right? Okay, so no, it's only on the arcade, Dreamcast, and PSP. Oh, it's on PSP. Okay. Uh, I'm not getting out on PSP. So. I mean, that'd be kind of obnoxious <laughs> to play with only the one analog stick, I imagine, so. I mean, probably. Well, I don't know. What's the Dreamcast? Yeah. What's the Dreamcast controller like? Does it have, like, two analog sticks? I want to say it just has one. I don't know. I thought it had two, but maybe it only does have one. Stars. Good job, Jill. <laughs> Marvel vs. Capcom 2, once again, just another classic. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like if we're going to play it, probably need to get it on the Dreamcast, or uh, most likely Dreamcast, anyway. Ooh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That is okay. You're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I will accept being wrong. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Although, if you didn't want to get it for the PSP, obviously, I wouldn't say no. I know you want to get, like, is that a new PSP or a new Vita? Which one were you looking for? I was considering getting either my old PSP fixed or a new PSP. Ah, okay. So. Get it fixed. The analog stick on mine is kind of busted, but I would need to buy a new battery and stuff for it to see if it even still works. Yeah, I'd say get it fixed. We have places here that do that, and it's probably cheaper than getting a new one. Probably. I mean, probably. I was only considering maybe getting a newer one because the one I have is like the original fat model. Mm -hmm. Just thinking maybe getting one of the slim models. Oh, okay, fair. Because I did have one at one point, and I'm like, yeah, I'm done playing PSP games because I figured I could just play them on my Vita. But now I'm like, well, I kind of want a physical copy of Persona and Persona Reportable since uh, Atlas won't give us a physical copy of the new ports they just did. <laughs> Maybe one day they'll get, like, a limited run or special reprint or something. Maybe. Then I'll buy them. See, so, you know, they put Tron Bond in Marvel vs. Capcom too, but yet we still don't get a Mega Man Legends 3. It's like, good God. That's pretty funny. I know this is pretty normal now, but, like, I don't remember seeing a lot of fighting games in the past that had a lot of stuff animated in the background. Um, I mean, yeah, maybe not a lot of stuff. I, I think, like, some stuff. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I think Street Fighter kind of did, but Street Fighter kind of has, like... Well, and by Street Fighter, I mean, like, Street Fighter, like, 2 in particular, I think. Yeah. And speaking of Cheers 3... Um, but 
it's kind of easy to do in street fighter i think because you know you make a good point like even right here right not really a lot yeah. going on in the background so maybe you're right maybe that is probably maybe not the first game to have a lot of like stuff animated in the background but probably one of the rare examples for the time right yeah it's probably getting more commonplace because i mean it, it doesn't necessarily matter the stuff moving in the background i just think it makes the world feel more lively and it was kind of nice to see like all the lights going around it was really cool Although I do like the idea that someone painted the side of the building's U.S. flag and then like the next building just has like a bowl of fruit. That is pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Three wins. They're showing off a lot of different characters, huh? Um, yeah. Yeah, See, like, there's some animation in the background here. here. Yeah, there's a little bit with like the guys moving around and everything, but not nearly as much as Capcom was doing, or Marvel vs. Capcom was doing. Yeah. So Megan, like, what is your experience with fighting games? Uh, I've played very little of a few fighting games over the years. Uh, the ones I could think of off the top of my head would be like Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat versus DC, and um, maybe a little bit of like the X-Men one, or one of the X-Men ones, I don't remember which one. Okay. But I, I don't know, it's just been a genre I've never really played a lot of, never really been into it that much. Okay, fair. And I guess Smash Bros would count, but it's a little bit different. Yeah, some would argue it counts. Like, let's, let's not open up that can of worms. Some would argue that it's not a fighting game. Some would argue that it is. I'd say yeah. it's it, it's on the fence, to be honest. I, I don't I don't truly know. It's more of a party game, in my opinion. Megan, you're gonna you're just gonna make a lot of people pissed off. You, you should probably just stop talking about Smash. Okay, I'll stop <laughs> talking about Smash. It's a good game. <laughs> Anyway, joking aside, uh, Special Channel 5, another um, classic game from the Dreamcast library. Okay. I've never, never played heard it. of this one either. Oh, oh my god, Megan, where have you been? Not in the Dreamcast, hello? I haven't ever played a Dreamcast either. I still know Space Channel 5 and Power Stone. Well, I don't know. Why would I know about them? Uh, cause you hear other people talk about them, Megan, or you're in like the gamer sphere, you know? I'm in the gamer sphere, but no one talks about these games. Like, you're, it's not like you're that much younger than me either. So it's like, you know, you don't have an excuse, Megan. Oh man, I was in the gamer sphere that was like for online games like RuneScape and MapleStories. It's probably why I didn't hear about it. I feel like I'm just in the very casual gamer sphere. No offense to the casual gamer sphere, so yeah, people will, people out there. But see, I was kind of the opposite. I never, I never did Maple Story, never did Neopets, never really did any of that stuff. Yeah, I did a lot of those stuff. So basically another rhythm style game. Yeah. But uh, a bit unique with how it looks. 
Yeah, it does seem pretty unique. King of Fighters. Nice. See, I've heard of King of Fighters, but I've never played any of them. Yeah, me neither. I've never played uh, any of them either. I do like how, again, we've kind of transitioned to, uh, in my opinion, a genre that's probably pretty safe for fighters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that is very true. It is pretty safe. Like, a bit harder to break into, especially, like, nowadays, since you have a lot of established uh, fighters, yeah. right? But, like, back then, yeah, very, very safe. Could just, like, make it, people play it. And, like, to be fair, yeah. all the ones that we've seen so far are pretty established, I suppose. With the yeah. Marvel versus Capcom, the Street Fighters, your uh, King of Fighters, for back then, at least. Yeah. And also, your Rhythm Games, also pretty safe. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was kind of cheesy, but that was funny. A little bit. Hey. Come on, man, you gotta block. You gotta block my guy. I do like the plane moving in the background. That's pretty neat. That is cool. It just reminds me of that meme from Pokemon Tournament where, like, Blaziken and Gengar are fighting in the middle of the street, and it's just like that feeling when traffic is stopped and you're late for work because a chicken's fighting a ghost. <laughs> I mean, true. <laughs> oh, Megan, I like how you're like, yeah, I've never heard of any of these like popular games that people talk about, but Pockin Tournament. There we go. Throw that one out there. What? <laughs> or Pokemon Tournament? I, yeah. I was in. Because it was a Pokemon thing. I never got into playing the game because I don't play fighters, but it was a cool game. Honestly, I'd be kind of curious what the online community would be like for that, but I would probably just get my ass handed to me, so that's not really appealing. I mean, potentially. I doubt it has a lot of, like, people starting to play it, right? Probably not. It's probably pretty hardcore players that if they're still playing it. So I don't know what silver is, but I'm intrigued. Yeah, I've never seen this either. <laughs> Cheesy dialogue. I love it. Mm. Defend your honor. So it's actually on Steam, by the looks of it. Oh, it is? Yeah. Intro, it's called Spiral House. Yeah, yes, yeah, so this would be the one. And it came out 99, 31st of August. Yeah, no. That, yeah, okay, so it's on Steam. It's like 749 mm. Canadian. Um, might be worth checking out. Pretty high rating, a 92%. Okay. I don't know, I might have to actually add this one to my wish list and maybe pick it up later. Yeah, maybe. That sounds like it could be fun. I don't know what the wishlist button on mobile is. I'll be honest, I'm not sure. I'll add it to cart and then just do it later. Fun fighters. Fur fighters. Oh, my bad. <laughs> that is okay. Ah! Seems now see this one seems unique. 
once again though kind of still evokes like a game from like you, you fluffed it okay like that kind of still invokes yeah. a game from like maybe 98 99 right not yeah. really doesn't really give me a sense of like okay this, this is the game going into like the modern era where we have like good stories and you really intricate like stuff going on right yeah See, like that's kind of the um, the the thing that I, I find kind of neat about doing videos like this, right? Because, like, like I said before, I think in like maybe even the '95 one, it's neat to see like what developers put out there, right? Yeah. But it's all and, and to like see trends and stuff. But it's also kind of a good way to see like, you know, like you can kind of compare them as well, right? Because yeah. like I know you'll have. Yeah, you know, like some games where it's like, well, yeah, it might look good, right? But, you know, X other game came out and I just like did it better or did it in a more unique way, right? Which I'm not saying is like the case with this one. It's, it's just more like my thought process, right? Like, yeah. Because, like, I can't think of an example, mind you, off the top of my head, like, right this moment. But, you know. Sometimes you get a good game, but another game just might come out and blow it out of the water just because it does it slightly better, you know? Yeah. Which is why it's kind of neat, in my opinion, to really see this. And, you know, honestly, for all I know, maybe this game is, like, super good, right? I'm not too sure. I don't know yeah, what the story so. is. It's very interesting, though. Yeah, like, it seems interesting. But, like, I would be curious as to the plot, if it does have one, or if it's just, like, pick a character and then just, like, go through levels, you know? Yeah. Like how how did for fighters do? You know, let me let me have a look see. Let me get it off of silver and uh, see. So for D two, we saw this one last year too, didn't we? Was it last year? I believe so. I I seem to recall a D two. Apparently, got an updated version for the PS two called uh, Fur Fighters Vigo's Revenge. Hmm, okay. Uh, so the game itself, give me your reception, please. Ah, uh, pretty good, like 8 out of 10, 80 out of 100, 69, low out of 100. <laughs> um, 7 out of 10, 8.5 out of 10, so it did pretty good, to be fair. Well, okay. Well, maybe we'll have to track down the PS2 version. Yeah. I will say it, it does seem like the PS2 version scored lower overall, but, oh, okay. but that could just be because it came out and by that point the game may not have been like dated, but like a year later, a lot of, a lot of other games can come out in that time and be like, you know, yeah. And, and you can also look at it like, well, yeah, it looked good on the Dreamcast, but on the PS2, you know, it could be better or something, you know, like a lot of people are going to be a bit more critical, I think. Yeah, I think that's pretty normal for a lot of this. Yeah, so even if the reviews are like, eh, you know, and not as good as the first or the original, it, it still might be. People just might be a bit more picky a year later. Or they might have expected more for the updated version, right? True. Oh, my God. You gotta move, my dude. You gotta you gotta walk around, or do, or do you stand still? Is it like a rail shooter? I mean, I feel like he should be able to actually move. Okay, well enough of that. We're on a Sega GT now. 
He's like, nah, I'm done. Good Sonic Blue. <laughs> so besides Dreamcast, I do have to wonder what else we're going to have here. It's like we've gone through PlayStation, Nintendo 64, Game Boy Color, I think was at the start of this, right? I believe so, yeah. Um, so what else would we have? Because they're not going to show off any Xbox stuff unless they do like PS2, but I imagine that would be with, um, you know, the PlayStation stuff at the start. So I mean, still, most likely. Because like we still have like, for us, about over an hour, I think. So, you know, two yeah. times speed, right? It's a nice thing about two times speed. For something like for something like this, right? Yeah. Like, I, like, there's no way I could sit through four hours of you know this, right? No. Uh, even if it is fun, but two times speed, yeah, I can do two hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, typing of the dead, another classic, oh, of course. Nice. Uh, but I also love the House of the Dead and House of the Dead Two, so I'm gonna be a bit biased regardless, uh, to be honest. We already taken care of G. You are next. And he just flies off like a little asshole he is. How could anyone do this? My god, I want to play the original House of Dead 2 and House of Dead so bad on stream. One day, I, I really just need to get MAME working, or I need to get an arcade machine. <laughs> but and I, I'd rather get MAME working, because I don't want to spend the money on an arcade machine. That would be a lot. Let alone two of them for House of the Dead. And I know I could play Typing of the Dead, but I mean, it's different. And it actually is different. It's like, I think the ending is actually technically different. And I know some of the areas you come across are a little different, I think. <laughs> Fucking owned. Shenmue. I need to play Shenmue someday. I think we talked about this before. Uh, when they're showing I off mean, Shenmue. Probably last year. I think they did show a bit of Shenmue off last year, I think. They did, yeah. Um, I just think it didn't have a specific date at the time. Yeah. Because I do need to play Shenmue. Because, like, I know it's not made by the same people, but could you argue that Yakuza took a lot of inspiration from Shenmue? In terms of, yeah, like, I'm pretty sure it did. kind of the quirkiness of it and how the, it overall kind of plays out? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. Cause like I'm looking at this now and I don't have a ton of experience with the Yakuza yet, but I'm looking at this and I'm like, I know Shenmue's kind of quirky, right? It's a bit goofy at times. And you do like a lot of different things in Shenmue. Yeah. And then I think that's kind of like Yakuza. It's a bit quirky. Yeah, you have a lot of melee fighting in Yakuza, I believe. Just like in Yeah, Shenmue. they're brawler games. And you know, you do a lot of mini games in Yakuza. Just like in Shenmue. So, you know, yeah. I feel like you could make a claim that Shenmue kind of inspired Yakuza. Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if, if not the same studio, a lot of the same devs also worked on Shenmue.
I forget, did they ever port Shenmue to other consoles or is it just on Dreamcast? Is that on Steam now? Yeah, they ended up porting Shenmue 1 and 2 onto modern day consoles on Steam and I believe PS4 before Shenmue 3 came out because they had the Kickstarter for it a few years ago. Yeah. But I heard Shen 3 or Shenmue 3 is kind of mediocre to be honest. I've heard that too. It's still worth but, playing, but. I mean, probably. It's just, you know. After like 10 to 15 years of like no new Shenmue and then you do get a new one, expectations are going to be high, right? Well, especially since they promoted the Kickstarter during E3 during Sony's press conference. Yeah. Ah, oh, Shenmue has an anime adaptation. I don't know about that. Oh, that's cool. Co-produced by Country Roll and Adult Swim, Ooh. apparently. Dreamcast, Dreamcast DVD, DVD player. player. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to... I need to have a little bit of a look at this. We'll slow, we'll slow it yeah. down briefly here, just so we can get a good look at the peripherals. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. I wonder if the rest of this is going to show more tech, then. Maybe. So Dreamcast DVD player. See, that's really interesting. Now, uh, so this was before the PS2 came out. So Dreamcast, once again, kind of trying to be a bit ahead of the game. Um, yeah. Cause now it's not built into the Dreamcast, which is probably the real problem. It was probably pretty expensive to buy along with the Dreamcast. Probably, yeah. So probably not really a good thing, but they tried and they had the idea. They did. Dreamcast and mouse. Yeah, something I've really got on, on a console is mice. I mean, you can do it now, kind of, but... Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of surprised like uh, the uh, peripherals, like a mouse never really became a thing for consoles. Like with shooters, I mean, right? Yeah, or RTS games. Yeah, or like RTS games, because you could do it now. You you legitimately could easily. I mean, hell, Nintendo did it with the Super Nintendo. So, you know, with today's technology, yeah. you could literally just get a mouse and probably just plug it into a console. And assuming it had the right stuff on the console to be able to recognize a mouse, you could probably do it perfectly fine, right? Probably. Like, I get the idea of, like, oh, but then you have people playing with, the, like, a mouse and stuff. Like, using Overwatch as an example here. Well, legend. Nostalgia. Um, it's like, oh, well, yeah, but, you know, then you give them an advantage. Oh, we are seeing PS2 stuff. Yeah. Okay, so they didn't uh, package it with PS1. From earlier. Okay, that's cool. See, I'm going to like this a lot because I have a lot of good memories from the PS2. That uh, was one of my main yeah. consoles for like the longest time. So that's probably going to give me a lot of nostalgia. For a very long time. Yeah. As Megan excitedly talks over me there. Uh, she's really um, excited for PS2. No, it's okay. That's fine or funny. Um, for now, I'll probably find it okay. annoying if it happens more. And then I'll tell you to get yeah. out of here. Get out of my recording okay. session. Okay, let me just leave the call. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, just like, you know, you can say, like, you can make the argument, like, oh, well, yeah, I'm going to pause here, actually, because you can make the argument, which I think did happen with Overwatch, where it's like, oh, yeah, but if you give a console player a mouse, then they're going to have an advantage over all the other console players, which, I mean, yeah, it would be true. But I don't know. I still am kind of surprised no one's really tried it, or at least from what I know of. I mean, I haven't really looked. Maybe some people have tried making it. But like, hey, maybe. So I don't know. I think it kind of makes sense. Give the like, console players a mouse. Like I say, even just for RTSs, right? It would make playing an RTS on a, a console actually easy, right? Yeah, I don't know. I almost wonder if the developers of the consoles put some kind of code or restriction on the console to try and get people to not do that because they want them to buy their controllers and peripherals, right? I mean, maybe that is true. And I just feel like they could make a lot of money by selling, like, a special, like, mouse or something for the consoles. Maybe, maybe I'm probably. wrong. 
Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. It's just how I how I, I feel. Yeah. Was it last year that it was announced? I think it was, I think right? So. Yeah. So it should be out by this point, in theory. Or it's launching later this year. Yeah, like it's, like it's probably out already in Japan, based on what we're seeing. Yeah. A oh, Dark Cloud. Woo! I need to play Dark Cloud. Yeah. Like I played it a bit when it came out, but I never actually finished it. Well, I do own it. If you don't have it. Yeah, I think that's why I don't actually... That's why I don't think I've ever picked it up, because I think you own it. Yeah. Otherwise, I would, for sure. Uh, Samurai Warriors. Words? No, I think it's Samurai, Samurai Warriors. Warriors. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point, actually, right? If the Dreamcast is trying to get the DVD... See, it's kind of an example of what I was talking about earlier, right? Like, Dreamcast is, like, trying to get a DVD peripheral for themselves. But if the PS2 yeah. is out and it has been built in, it's just automatically better, right? Yeah. So, so that's kind of what I mean when I was talking about earlier, where like some games will now it's with a console, mind you, not with a game, but where it's like, you know, here's like a game, but then another game's out and it just kind of does it a little bit better. Even if the game is like good, it'll get overshadowed if something else does it better, right? Yeah. This is kind of what I'm talking about in a way, but with console instead. It's like, yeah, the Dreamcast is, the, is a good console. I don't think anyone's really ever doubted that. But, you know, and it's trying to get a DVD peripheral for it. But you have the PS2, and it has a DVD in it already. It's like, it's just kind of doing the hardware and the tech, but it's doing it better. Right? So it's like, well, yeah. why get a Dreamcast when you can just get a PS2? Well, that's true. Because even if they had a bundle that came with the DVD player free, it would still be more of a hassle than just using a PS2 for a lot of people. Yeah. And I don't know when the Xbox comes out. I'm trying to make. I don't know if that's coming out next year. And that'll I think it's have, next year. Because that, that has a DVD player in it too, right? I believe so. Yeah. So once again. Yeah, it, it makes perfect sense to me that the Dreamcast did just kind of die off a couple of years, like in a couple of years time. Because everything else is just kind of doing what it did, but a little bit better, right? Like for the consumer. Yeah. Man, look at that. <laughs> Still have my original PS2 from all those years ago. Still works perfectly fine. Like, I think it might need a bit of a cleaning every now and again. But, like... And I've done that a couple times. But, like, overall... You know, like, really good. You know? Yeah. Like, it, it hasn't given me any issues. Which, once again, I can just point out really quick that my 360... Red ringed on me, like, twice. Uh, already. No. Oh. Within like the first few years I got it. I haven't touched it in a long time now. Maybe if I do, maybe it'll red ring on me again. And if it does, I don't oh. know what I'm going to do. I might, I, I might honestly just go and buy a new one if I need to. If I need to. I, I do think like my that would be fair. I mean, there's a lot disc. of good games on the 360. Yeah, a lot of good games. I like the 360 as well. Like, it's kind of weird, right? It's like PS2, like between PS2 and Xbox and Nintendo... I, I guess you could say the GameCube, right? I guess it'd be in that same kind of generation. Um, PS2 was my favorite for that gen, right? Yeah. Then you had PS3 and 360. And I guess we, right? 360 was my jam. Like, is it, see, see, I'm not like a console fanboy, right? I literally just go for what I think is good, right? What I kind of prefer. Cause like the PS3 was fine, but I definitely played on my 360 a lot more than I did my PS3 when that came out. <laughs> yeah, I only had the money to get one, so we always just kind of kept the PlayStation. See, I'm I'm honestly pretty lucky, right? Cause like literally the, the only reason I got a PS3, Metal Gear Solid 4. Oh. And I remember just saying to my mom one day, I'm like, Mom. 
look, I know I have a 360, right? But Metal Gear Solid 4 is coming out and I need to see how the game ends. And literally that day, day it came out, I think I got a bundle with it. Oh, hold on. I, I think I got a bundle with it and it came with like MGS4 or something. It's not like a special PS3. I think it came in a bundle. I'm not too sure. Picked it up that day, went home and I played MGS4. Uh, so that's why I have a PS3. MGS4 literally sold me a console. And then I got other games for it. But, you know, it's really all thanks to MGS4 that I, I got one to begin with. I do find that kind of funny because, like, we weren't even allowed to buy games that had subscription fees to it. They would have never let us buy a second console. Yeah, I don't know. I actually don't know why my, my parents were, like, super okay with that. Like, not that, you know, we struggled for money or anything. We were, all, we were pretty, like, well off. But, like, yeah. you know, like, at the time... I mean, yeah, I couldn't get both consoles at the same time, of course. I usually did have to, like, pick and choose. But later on, like, say a year later or something, it's like, well, yeah, you can just get, you know, the other console. Because they, they knew I was really big into video games, right? Yeah. So it's like, oh, you know, yeah, here's a PS2. Yeah, here's a, you know, an Xbox. Oh, you know, 360. Yeah, you know, your, your favorite game from, like, one of your favorite game series is coming out. Yeah, yeah, we'll get you a PS3. And with the <laughs> Wii, it's like, I wasn't even, like, I wanted a Wii, yeah, but legitimately my parents actually pushed me a lot more to get a Wii. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> they they never, they didn't really care to play it. I, I, I guess maybe they just saw all the hype and they're like, oh, Wii, that, that's pretty cool. And then we just like, I mean, probably. Got it, maybe. To be honest, right? Like, that's probably it. Yeah. Which I got. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know. The, yeah, like I said, it's kind of weird, right? Like, even now, like, I'm pretty sure if I were to... Well, granted, obviously money's a bit tighter nowadays, right? Because everything's, like, gone up. But I'm pretty yeah. sure, like, if I were to get, a, like, a little bit of money and if I were to ask my mom to, like... Like, if I had to, right? I don't. But if I had to like ask my mom for like a little bit of a little bit of help for like a PS5, I think she'd be okay with it, to be honest. If I could provide like the majority of the money, and I were to just say, "Hey, mom, can I just have like a little little hand with it?" She'd probably be because like when you were talking about getting your PS5, right? Mm -hmm. My mom was even like saying to me, "Like, oh, we should get our own PS5," <laughs> 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 which I never prompted her like at all. She just like mentioned that to me, and I was like, ah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, one day. <laughs> one day I probably will. I mean, you did say before that your mom kind of pushed you to get even, like, collector's editions of games because they she came did. with a lot of cool, hard-to-find stuff. She did, yes. My mom always pushed me to, to get the more expensive collector's editions. That kind of stopped, but that was that was mostly because uh, of me. I think because they, they did get really crappy for a long time. They've gotten better now, like, more recently, yeah. which I might honestly start getting more collector's editions now myself. Um, but like they started getting really not that great and eventually I was just like you know mom they're not really great anymore we should if I'm gonna get a game I should just get like the, the normal base game <laughs> but yeah like my mom my mom was very much like oh yeah if you're gonna get the game get the collector's edition which is part of why I have the $300 at the time Master Chief collection not the collection the uh, Master Chief Legendary Edition uh, for Halo 3 Right. Yeah. Cause she's like, oh, it comes with a helmet. Oh, that's pretty cool. And I was like, yeah, it is. And then she's like, yeah, we'll just get the money and we'll just pick it up. We'll get that one. I'm happy I did. I do like it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But yeah, my, my mom is very much like that. Like even now, she's like, well, why don't you get the collector's editions? And I'm <laughs> like, well, first off, cause they sell out uh, pretty quickly nowadays. So if I'm going to get they one, do. I need to make sure I get it straight away. Um, yeah. For some games, not all of them, mind you, will have like a collector's edition that sells out straight away. But 
For those that do, you got to jump on it pretty quickly. Yeah, a and, lot of them do. And even then, like, I can't justify spending the money for some of them. Uh, but yeah, but although to be fair, if if I if I did go like, oh, I want this collector's edition, I can buy the game. Mom would probably be like, oh, yeah, well, I'll put you in for like the collector's edition part. I don't know, my mom's great like that. She really is. I don't know why she's like that, though, to be honest. Well, I think part of it is because she she's of the opinion that some of that stuff will increase in value, which yeah. I think is the case for some of it, not for all of it. Like, I don't think the Master Chief helmet really increased in value all that much. No, I heard of people selling the helmet for like five to ten bucks because they were just trying to get rid of it because there's so many of them out there. Yeah. So for that one, didn't really increase in value. For some of my other stuff, maybe, to be honest. Like, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know a lot of the ones that have, like, statues and stuff generally go for a decent amount if you sell it with the statue. But, regardless, they're they're cool, right? Like, I actually picked up the, um... As of right now, the unreleased Final Fantasy 16. Uh, collector's edition. So I'm gonna throw this out there too, because uh, I I should probably be talking about like the games I'm seeing on screen a bit more. They've just been all sports games, really, which is why I I can't really say anything. Yeah. Uh, but so PS2 pretty hard on the sports games at the moment, which is interesting to me, because like I don't think we've seen anything that wasn't like a racer or a sports game from PS2 at the moment, right? I don't believe so. Yeah, because they're talking about the, yeah, because they're talking about the drive bay, and then they go straight into a racing game. So I'm curious what we're gonna see, because what comes out in like the next year or so? Will we see like an early thing of like Ratchet, maybe? Uh, no, I don't believe so. We probably we might see Jack and Daxter. I don't know if that would be this year or next year. Um, I mean, I don't really know a lot about the launch lineup with the PS2. Oh, so I won't be surprised if we see uh, Starfighter, though. Maybe. A world is not enough. With the boy, with the boy Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, that's funny. I never played this James Bond game. I played uh, Agent Under Fire and Everybody Dies or something. Not or tomorrow, tomorrow never dies. dies. Yeah. Those yeah. two were really fun. Yeah, don't worry, Megan. If you mess up a James Bond movie title, I'll probably be able to correct you because I know a decent amount of them. At least the Pierce I mean, Brosnan ones. I'm not so sure in the early ones. I do want to watch some James Bond with you one day, though. I think it'd be really fun. I think it'd be fun. I don't know a lot about, like, the series in general. I, my entire experience literally comes from those two games. And so do you. There's only one James Bond, and that's Pierce Brosnan, basically. Well, yeah. And, like, I've seen commercials and stuff with... Uh, I don't know the actor's name, but the next James Bond, the one that's uh, the current James Bond. Daniel, well, Daniel Craig? Yeah. I think, yeah. I don't know if he's the current one anymore. I Well, I guess he is the most current one. Well, yeah. I, I don't think he's doing the next movie, but he is the current one as of now, because I don't think they've released a new movie yet. I don't believe so. Seven Blades. I haven't heard of this one. Hmm. Um, let me have a look. Seven Blades. Action adventure video game by Konami. Yeah. Uh, yeah, at least in Japan earlier. Uh, mediocre, apparently. In terms of reception. Oh, okay. uh, like 4 out of 10, 14 out of 20, 6 out of 10, and 46% out of 100. Oh. Um, so, uh, mediocre, probably middle of the road. Probably why I haven't heard of it. <laughs> it kind of looks that like it, though. Sense. Like, it kind of looks like your typical kind of action adventure, not beat em up, but like, you, you know, that style of game, right? Yeah. Ephemeral Fantasia. I haven't heard of this one either. Neither have I. Going down like the, the JRPG kind of route, I see. Uh, ephemeral? Yeah, ephemeral Fantasia. Yeah, it's popping up on my Google. 
It's almost like Google's listening in on me and what I'm talking about. Hmm. Oh, it totally does. I was getting ads on Reddit the other day for the Sega Saturn. Kind of sussy, if you if you ask me. Uh, so once again, kind of mediocre uh, by the looks of it. Uh, 48 out of 100, 6 out of 10, 3.5 out of 10, 4 out of 10, a D minus. Um, some of them being really, uh, really nasty to it, like the 1 out of 5 oh. stars. 2 out of 5 from RPG Gamer or RP Gamer, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Mediocre, though. Okay. Probably also I never heard of it. Shadow of Destiny, I think I actually have heard of. It's a I lot of Konami games. Yeah, a lot of Konami games. And you can definitely tell because they all have that... Well, not just because it says Konami on the bottom there. But because they have like <laughs> that very distinct like, Konami look to them too, right? They do. Because like the character models for a lot of Konami games from this period have like a very distinct kind of look to them it, it's a little hard to describe you know but they kind of have yeah. that like that 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 look and texture to them like you know what i mean yeah like not bad but you know just very noticeable yeah that's fair oh, i'm gonna take a sip so megan can talk for, for a moment but I don't have anything to say. <laughs> oh, this looks interesting. So you go. You just gotta make stuff up on the spot. I, I'm not good at making up stuff. I don't do improv. I mean, I don't either. But I try. It doesn't always come out good. But I try. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Shadow of Destiny. I don't even know one thing about it. Uh, I, I believe I've seen like the box art, but I've never actually picked it up. Zone of the Enders. Oh, okay. Another one I have. Another Konami game. Another one I haven't played, but I've heard of this one for sure. I've heard of this one because I do have the HD remaster they did on PS3. I've heard it's pretty cool. So Shadow of Destiny. Um. That looks like good to middle of the road. I'm getting a lot more higher rankings on this one. Okay. A lot more eights, only like a couple of sixes and a four. Oh, from Gundam X, whoa. So it's a mech game? Yeah, it's like a, a mecha game. Huh. Metal Gear Solid, woo. I'm just seeing it saying like all oh, these guys worked on these games. Yeah. I know I'm going by pretty quick, so people might be like, oh, why, why is he mentioning Metal Gear Solid? Because maybe you're looking away like eating a sandwich or something, right? I don't know what you do when you watch these things. Personally, if it were me, it's probably while I'm eating food of some sort. I was comfy to watch a longer <laughs> video while you eat food. I don't know. Yeah, it is fun to just sit and watch a longer video sometimes. Yeah, that's mostly what I do. That's why my YouTube feed is literally filled with like hour to hour and a half long videos like quite regularly hey, yeah, I, find it funny I, I go back and forth between like watching longer videos and like watching shorter stuff but i remember a little while ago i was listening to this assassin's creed retrospective and uh then i started getting recommended all these assassin's creed videos and all these long retrospective videos <laughs> i just think retrospectives are fun i don't know i, I don't know they are I used to be all about the Let's Plays, but then when I started streaming myself, well, you know. Ooh. Final Fantasy XI, Final Fantasy XI. I didn't realize that was a launch title. Uh, well, this is 2002 is when it's supposed to come out, so I don't know if you'd really call it a launch title. Okay, I guess that's fair. I thought that said 2001. Yeah, I never really played 11. I played it a little bit. I didn't play it a ton. Yeah, I've never played it. I've always been curious to go back and like try and play the PC version of it since it's still alive. I just don't really have the time or motivation to do it by myself. I mean, fair. How, like, I'd play it with you if you wanted. I just don't know if I want to dedicate a ton of time to it because I'm already at 14. Well, yeah, we um, still need to catch up on 14 stuff first for sure. 
I think I have a guidebook for Final Fantasy XI. If we can find it, I'm sure you'd enjoy reading it because I think it talks about the classes. I'm pretty sure it talks about the classes. I mean, probably. I do like looking at those tiny guidebooks. You know, actually, the one thing that I always thought was really neat about Final Fantasy XI is the translation software that they used. Just yeah. how, like, in game it would like translate what other players are saying, which I think is pretty cool. And I think it was very unique for the time. I think it might have been the only game that really did that. We could like play with Japanese players and, and have them speak Jap Japanese, but have it be translated to English for you, right? Yeah, no, honestly, it's pretty nice. Which I think may have even been in the guide that I, I think I remember uh, having. Because I remember it showed like uh, a very Lalafa like character. Like, like it had a little speech problem. It was like in Japanese, but then it, there's like another character in front of it. And then the Japanese, like the speech bubble went like, I think from the Japanese one and it, it went, became English or something. It's kind of neat. And I remember looking yeah. at that and going like, whoa, they can translate languages on the fly. Man, that's pretty cool. That is. But it was all too. But man, we got this. It's a pretty good game. We're going we're gonna to watch this one in, in full normal. Normal, normal speed. Look, yeah, I I'm, figured. I may be biased, okay? I love I love certain video games, all right? More Konami, though. Like, you know, it's had a lot of Konami. A ton yeah. of Konami. No, I've, I've heard how infamous this reveal is, so I'm kind of curious what this is. Shadow Moses. I need to stream the Metal Gear Solid games at some point, too. They're so amazing. I love them all, dude. You know what? I, I've even, like... I've honestly flip-flopped on how I feel about 4. Nowadays, I think I really like 4 a lot. <laughs> I liked 4 a lot when I played it. You never played any of the other ones, though. You literally have no opinion on 4. I'm sorry, Megan. I played one and two now. <laughs> I mean, now you have. I'm just kidding, by the way. For anyone that for anyone that thinks I'm being too mean to Megan, I'm I'm legitimately just kidding with her. I just like the teaser about MGS4 because she's like, back in the day, she's like, oh yeah, the only Metal Gear game I played was four, and I'm like, Megan, that's literally <laughs> like the last game in the series. <laughs> you know, that's literally like the last one you should play. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But I, I don't know, I like 4. Like, when I play through the games on stream, which will be fun, but it's going to be a weird amount of, like, watching and reading. Well, mostly watching and listening to, like, characters talk, which is what's yeah. going to be the interesting thing about it. I'm going to, there's going to be a large portion of, like, each game in the series that I'm just going to need to sit back and watch. You know, <laughs> <laughs> especially yeah. in 4. Holy crap, like, the movie length cutscenes in 4. Man, like, that's crazy. They're pretty long. Like, I remember one of them in particular that I actually timed. And I was like, wow, I could literally watch a movie in this time. So, yeah, uh, I, I want to stream the Metal Gear games at some point. Because I love them. I love them to death. And I want to talk about them. You know, but I don't want to, like... Spoil it for anybody that hasn't like played it themselves, of course, which is why I want yeah. to do it them myself because then I assume well, if people watch me, people watch this, then I can talk about it like during it, right? And I can give yeah. like my thoughts because because uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, I know I know they're showing two here, but, but which is an amazing game in its own right, but like Metal Gear Solid 4, when I played it the first time, I didn't really like it. I'm gonna be honest, I liked a lot of it. But I didn't really like how, like, certain aspects of it. I thought certain aspects were really weird. I'm not going to go into detail here. And I'm not really going to talk tell Megan about it either until she actually gets back up to, to 4. Because uh, she, she's still playing through the games. So I'm trying to get her to play 3 right now. Um, yeah. But, like... But, but then I, I thought about it, like, a lot a while later. And uh, the more I thought about it... The more certain aspects of the game that I didn't like in terms of the story actually made sense. 
You know, like it actually made sense the more I thought about it. So now if I were to go back and play it, my opinion on it is actually drastic, drastically different uh, for the story. Whereas now I'm like, yeah, it's actually really good. And the ending is actually really, really fantastic. Like, I love the ending to four, you know. And before I didn't, I, I literally remember doing like the final fight and thinking, man, that's it. <laughs> you know, like, really? Like all, all this all this bullshit that they kind of throw at you. It's like this, this isn't what this isn't what I signed up for, you know. But now I can go back and, and think like, actually, yeah, it is, it is actually good. And there might be some people out there that think it isn't. And I will try to change minds by 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 playing through it and being like, you know what? No, nah, four is actually good. And here's why. Right. OK, just play, just like playing through one of the cutscenes. We were just going to we're just going to two times speed it now. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. That, that's my thought on Metal Gear Solid four. But if we're talking two, I do straight up love two. two I know was people. Fun. I know people had like their issues with one aspect of the game, because you might be noticing something here, right, Megan? Yeah. It's all snake on the tanker. Yeah. And you know what happens later. Yeah. Yeah. So so a lot of people were really pissed off, right? I won't go into detail why, but a lot of people were really pissed off because they thought they were getting one type of game. And turned out actually no, they they got like like maybe like one third of the game here, and then the rest of it is like something completely different. <laughs> but but I actually argue that it was a good move, and we'll get there when I play through the game. Um, and that Hideo Kojima is actually the biggest troll in all of video game developer stuff right like he's probably the biggest oh, yeah. troll as a video game developer which is probably why a lot of people like his stuff because like he's very meta and he's very like trolly you know like it's actually I really mean, amazing honestly the thing that probably made me appreciate him as a developer was probably when I heard about like the Mendes Okay, so you're you're cutting out a lot. Um, if so, I'm just gonna pause you real quick, just in case that helps. Uh, yeah. So the one thing in particular that got me to really like Hideo Kojima as a game developer was when I found out about Psychomantis in in Metal Gear Solid One, and kind of what I won't say specifically what it is, but it was kind of like a really cool and really unique mechanic, and I thought it was pretty crazy. Yeah, I actually think that's why a lot of people kind of think of when they think of Metal Gear Solid, right? Is the Psycho Mantis fight. I know you said Mantis, which I think is kind of funny. No! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you didn't think I would catch, but I definitely heard you say Psycho Mantis. I was hoping you wouldn't catch it. Okay. <laughs> I said it right the first time, and then I was garbled. And I mean, a little bit. Uh, blame Discord or something. Fix your mic. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know a lot of people think about that fight when they think of Metal Gear uh, Solid, and it is really good. Uh, Kojima does just a really good job of stuff. Like, uh, there, there's even this one bit which is really funny, and this isn't really a spoiler, so I can actually kind of talk about this. Um, because there's like another character just named like. Uh, I'm trying to think of like his title. I think it's Raging Raven. No, maybe not Raging Raven. It might just be Raven. Fuck. What? What is it? What? What's that? Um, that one dude and I'm just one with the Gatling gun. Isn't he like Vulcan Raven or something? Vulcan Raven. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Raging Raven is the one from Four. I think. Ah. Uh, okay. uh, so that's that's where I get my confusion. Uh, but yeah, so Vulcan Raven, thank you. Yeah, so there's an enemy and like a boss character in MGS1 called Vulcan Raven. And in MGS2, uh, you're going down a corridor, and I think there's like a light on around a corner, and you see a shadow. 
and and it looks like Vulcan Raven. The snake just goes, huh? Raven? And then that's that's literally the entire cutscene. But if you go around the corner yourself, you'll see it's just a flashlight, like with a Vulcan Raven toy, like on the ground, and it's casting the shadow. And he doesn't say anything about it. If you don't look, you'll just be really confused. But it's really funny, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is really funny. Like I, I don't know, Hideo Kojima is really good. I, I, I like I've always said this with Hideo Kojima, and we will continue the video in a second. Mm -hmm. I think he's fantastic, but I will admit he's a bit too artsy sometimes, right? I will admit that. I think I talked about this actually during the PT gameplay, that thing that we did yeah. during Halloween. It's like he's great, and I love him, but I feel like he is kind of one of those like devs that maybe gets a little. A little too artsy sometimes, and it gets a little too meta, which is why I think some people are kind of turned off from Death Stranding. Yeah, because I've heard like like I don't know I've heard a lot of different things about Death Stranding. I've heard a lot of people say like, "Oh, it's really good. It's one of the best games he's made." But then I've heard some people say like, "Oh, it's actually garbage and not fun." I'm sure I would <laughs> like it, but the fact that I've heard like both from multiple different people. Leads me to believe that some people just maybe do see it as like a bit too artsy. And I can think like, yeah, Kojima probably would do that <laughs> with that game. Probably. I don't know. But I love Hideo Kojima. I think he is a treasure. <laughs> there you go, the big reveal. Yes, it's me. Such a friggin... So friggin weird. <laughs> it's such a funny. weird game. It was really funny, dude. Like, and I like how you had people clapping and stuff too. Cause yeah, I'm just too woo. Uh, international track and field. Hmm, interesting. ESPN. Another Konami game, right? Yeah. Okay, something tells me this isn't Formula One. <laughs> Not the Formula One we know. I am curious if that's what this game's actually called. Uh, um. I don't know, actually. I don't think it is. Yeah, I think they made a mistake with uh, with whatever they called this one. I'm pretty sure this isn't a game called Formula One 2000. Mm. I don't know what game this is, though. I don't know if it's Quake. It could be like a Quake game. I'm not too sure. Um, here's your Rumble Round 2 for PS2. Like quirky little games like this. Yeah. You don't really get too many of that in a boxing game. Yeah. Like boxing games are they're too simmy nowadays, you know. That's fair. But we're finally out of Konami, the Konami sphere. They have Midway yeah. now. I was surprised how many games they had coming out at this time. They had a lot. And I know a lot of them were sports games, but there was still a lot of variety that wasn't sports games, too. Yeah, I kind of have to wonder how many teams Konami had, or if they just had them do like a sports game and then do another sports game and then do another sports game. Maybe. 
Because I, I assume you could probably churn them out relatively quickly. Most likely. So I almost wonder if maybe they did do that. Where it's like, well, here's your racing game. Okay, but now you can make this one. Now you can make this one. Bungie! With Oni? Hmm. So yeah, this would have been before Microsoft did just like buy them, I guess, right? Yeah. Because did they buy them for Halo? I think they did, right? They did. Armored Core 2 from Software. That's a company yeah. that would go on to do amazing things in like the next so many years, like in the next decade. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, from what I remember, I'm pretty sure Microsoft bought them because they thought Halo and Master Chief would be a good mascot for their console. Yeah, they thought they bought Halo because they thought Master Chief and Halo would be a good mascot for their console. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure you're cutting out a little bit. Getting a little garbledy gooped. But. Yeah, so if I, if I ever repeat something that you say, it's mostly just that, just so other people don't have to transcribe like I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay, just fix your mic. I'm kidding. I, I don't, don't think it's the mic. I don't think it's your mic. I think there, I don't know what the hell is, is it, it is, though, still. I want to say it's something to do with Discord, but it's never happened with any of my other friends, and, uh,. I don't think you've heard me get garbled. It's only ever been you. Yeah, I haven't heard you get garbled at all. Yeah, and you used to stream a lot more for me than I did for you. So I'm not too sure what it is. Do you have your headset hooked up? Oh, well, it's wireless. Oh, well, yeah. Wireless. Well, yeah, but I mean, you can hook it up to like charge it though, right? Oh, yeah, I'm not charging it right now. But it's it, not keeping that low on battery or anything. If you were to plug it in, like, would that fix it? I don't believe so. Oh, well, mm. you should. Well, there's no harm in uh, checking and trying, right? Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Armored Core, pretty solid. I love Armored Core 2. Uh, Onimusha Warlords. I've never actually played Onimusha Warlords. Um. I barely played Onimusha. Like, I think I played Onimusha 2 and 3, I think. I know I played the one with the French guy in it. How about you, Megan? I played the first one. I got pretty far into the game. And then I never finished it. Okay. But uh, I ended up trading it. I didn't like the game enough. I thought it was cool, but I don't know. Maybe there's something with the stream. I don't know. Because you seem to get better whenever I pause. Yeah. Anyway, could you repeat a little bit of that? I heard you say you played the first one. I played the first one and I got pretty far into the game. I never managed to finish it, but I didn't really like the game enough to keep it, so I ended up trading it in. Okay. Yes, I don't know. Maybe when you just get garbled, maybe I'll just um, pause the video. But, I don't know. We might need to figure out what's causing that. Because that's still really confusing to me. Yeah. Why just all of a sudden your mic gets really garbled. Or if it's like a Discord thing. I don't know. I'm not too sure. Cause like, I don't think it, I don't think it would be like, I don't know. I, I don't know what's causing it. Cause the internet here is fantastic. Yeah. And we may be on the same like connection, but like I said, the fact that it's only been you and not like me, to me is a little bit strange. I'm not saying it's you. I'm not saying it's your mic. It could be a discord setting maybe. Maybe. I'm not too sure. We might need to compare settings later and just kind of see. Cause I don't know, there's something kind of strange about it. So Onimusha Warlords, is that the first one? It is, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because to be honest, I do recognize some of these areas. 
Eternal Blade. Yeah, Eternal Blade. I don't recall an Eternal Blade. Yeah, I've never heard of it. So is the rest of this going to be PS2? Because by so. my watch, we should still have about... Half an hour, I think. Yeah. Also, Dynasty Warriors 2. Dynasty Warriors 2. Fantastic. I, I can't tell you which Dynasty Warriors I played. I know I've played a, a numerous amount. I don't know if I ever went back to 2. I don't know if I ever played 2, but we did have a demo that had 3 on it, and we played that mission a lot. <laughs> I just remember that specifically because it was a 30 minute time limit and we would always get really close to the end of it and then we'd run out of time. Yeah, no, I don't talk about it much, but I do have a lot of love for the Dynasty Warriors series. Yeah, it's definitely a fun franchise. I haven't played very many of them, though. Well, I mean, true. You did. That is true. You did mention just now that you really only played the demo for three, right? Yeah. So arguably, we could probably even say you haven't really played any if you just played the demo. Well, yeah. That was a bit weird. He went through the truck. He did. We'll get you playing some Dynasty Warriors at some point. It's, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Summoner. Hmm. I don't know what this one is. I, I think I've heard the title. I've definitely seen it in game stores, but I don't know much about it. It seems different. Uh, let me have a look. Smugglers run. So once again, a couple of, oh, it's on Steam. Mm. Yeah, so it's another game on Steam. Oh, that's kind of neat. I mean, 85%, very positive. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm glad we're seeing some of these on Steam. You know, it's kind of neat. Yeah. I mean, we've seen two of them from this year: Silver and now uh, Sum Summoner. Gunslinger. Don't think I played Gunslinger. To be honest, probably not really that good. Yeah, I was gonna say, it looks kind of bad. Um, Gunslinger PS2. Oh, did it not actually come out? Oh, it's a canceled game. Oh. It's an unreleased uh, action adventure set in the Old West, which I guess was supposed to be an open world RPG kind of game. Mm, okay. So there you go. We saw a piece of a game that never came out. It's kind of neat. I do like seeing those. Like, it sucks that they don't come out, but it's kind of neat to see that, right? Where it's like, well, a bunch is Odyssey. Mm. Oh, yeah. This is like the... um. Yeah, I remember this trailer. I remember watching this a lot when it came out. I mean, it looks cool. Yeah. This is one game that got screwed over by the demo. 
uh interestingly enough yeah yeah because um wait a minute This is also very different. I remember this being a trailer to a different Odd World game and not Munch's Odyssey. Because I know they had an idea for an RTS game as well, which never materialized. And I could have sworn this was for the RTS game. But maybe that was for Odd World, Munch's Odyssey. Or maybe this is for Munch's Odyssey. Yeah, this is for Munch's Odyssey now. Okay. That's weird. That's really weird. I'm very confused. Or, or maybe, oh, maybe my maybe my memory is just playing with me and messing with me. Anyway, so yeah, so as I was saying earlier, uh, yeah, this this game got kind of screwed by the demo in a way because like the demo was very crappy. Because mm, okay. uh, if you played the demo, it's literally just like, here's how you do this. Go over here do that here's how you maneuver around this like stuff there's really no gameplay to uh, it other than just being a really crappy tutorial that's not even in the main game right the main game does it properly oh okay um but uh, i've seen so many posts from those from people that play the demo saying yeah i didn't buy a munch's odyssey because the demo like was really boring Hey, I want to talk about this a little bit because I, I can talk about this a little bit. So, yeah, so that was Munch's Odyssey, right? Now, I'm going to just talk about what we're seeing here and why, I, I, why I'm actually really confused. Because I know they had Munch's Odyssey, but they also talked about, like, an RTS that they were thinking of bringing out. I don't know what it, I don't know which one it would have been, but I remember they being being talking about an RTS. And I feel like this is the footage I've seen where they where it was kind of like footage for what the RTS was supposed to be, right? So it's kind of weird that it's being packaged alongside with Munchie's Odyssey. Because yeah, none of this is related to Munchie's Odyssey at all. Hmm. Right? Which is strange. Unless, like, they just label it Munchie's Odyssey, but this isn't supposed to be a part of Munchie's Odyssey, and it's supposed to be, like, a, technically a separate video um, for it. But I like the idea for the RTS. Uh, so just to kind of talk about it like while we go through this. Uh, I think part of the RTS was like you could play as the Mudokins or the Gluckins, aka the the nature loving slave people or, you know, the corporations, right? Okay. And I think the idea was like if you played as the Mudokins, you could you would like see the world around you, like become more green and become more full of life. But if you played as the corporation um, you, it would all become like much more dark and dingy and like horrible, right? Oh. And I think you could capture like Mudokins and have them be slaves for your factories. Mudokins are the, uh, the, the kind of blue native-ish creatures, right? Yeah, okay. Um, really good idea, never happened. But yeah, I love Odd World as well. Odd World is one of my favorite game series. I've not heard of Orphan before. Um, apparently, it was the launch title for the PS2. Okay. And it got pretty mediocre scores. A lot of 5 out of 10s and a lot of like 3.5 stars out of 5. Oh, GameSpot gave it a 2 out of 10. Yikes. Cool. Sorry that I've been pausing a little bit, by the way. Okay. I, ju I just see some specific games that I kind of want to talk a little bit more about, I guess. Yeah. Like Oddworld. Like Oddworld just really confused me with what I was seeing there for the footage. See, I need to get Megan to play the Oddworld games, dude. That's like another one I want to see you play at some point. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, they're just unique. Like, they're creepy and they're unique and... It's very innovative, right? Like, I think each Odd World game is very innovative.
Yeah, I can't remember the same thing to Orphan because I never played it, but it seems interesting. I mean, like I said, obviously it got mediocre reviews, but I mean, looking at it here, it seems interesting to me. Kind of like a bit of a platformer-ish game, but the guy looks like he's Dart from Legend of Dragoon. Kind of. And a dragon, funnily enough. Really weird and skinny looking dragon, but a dragon nonetheless. Well, I guess this is more of a wyvern. I guess this one's a bit more of a wyvern, to be honest. Oh, Eco. I mean, Eco, classic. Never actually played the original Ico or Eco. No, I never have either. But I would like to. Rayman. Yeah, Rayman 2, another good game. I really liked Rayman 2 quite a bit. Rayman 2 is really fun. Although they're playing a part of the game I've never seen before. I didn't actually finish it and get super far into it. I see, I don't know how far I got. Oh, the bouncer. The bouncer. A game I would like to play at some point. Um, so Wipeout Fusion, I never really played much Wipeout, so I never really played much Wipeout Fusion, unfortunately. Yeah, I've never played any Wipeout games. And hey, Megan, is it cool if we pause for just one moment? Yeah, sure. All right. But I shall return in one sec. Okay, and I return, so... Megan, are you ready to continue? Yes. Okay, so we're on Wipeout. Oh, Megan, you forgot to tell me to unmute the thing, Megan. I muted, I I muted it briefly. Muted, it. muted briefly. All right, there we go. It's a habit now, okay? Okay. Don't ask <laughs> why. It's just it's just how it is. Okay, so we have Wipeout. Uh, once again, hey, you know, just classic racing game, right? Like, not, like, you know, it's Wipeout, right? Wipeout's fun. You've yeah, actually, it's totally fun. yeah, you've actually been bugging me to play Wipeout quite a lot. Interestingly enough, was I? Yeah, remember because 
every time you've like looked at my well because i have a disc copy of white, uh, white but one of them i don't know which one um mm. and i think even before that you're like oh we should play white but fusion because i think you have it on something i don't believe i have white but i thought maybe you were just thinking of uh red out because i was saying we should play red out i mean maybe red out i mean red out white boat yeah yeah, because for those who don't know, it's like a newer racing franchise that came out a few years ago, and it's like a futuristic racer. Okay. That's good, That's good to know. <laughs> yeah, The Getaway. Thank you. I've seen this game before, but I've never played it. I hear The Getaway is basically just like a not as good GTA, like 3, I think. Uh, so they're doing it, but not as good. <laughs> okay. A little bit. These Drop look shit. a lot like the Pelicans from Halo. A little bit, yeah. Like, that's actually kind of uncanny. <laughs> also, isn't the getaway based off a movie? I the think The getaway? So. Yeah. I don't know. I just have vague recollections of seeing the game when I was shopping way back when. So I'm curious about Dropship because this almost seems like a game that wouldn't come out. And I don't know why. I don't know why it gives me that vibes. Our Draken again. Draken! We saw Draken on PS1, didn't we? We did. Maybe game? it got maybe it got changed to PS2 because we were talking about it. Maybe. Been on my list of games for a long time to get. If I can ever find it. <laughs> oh look, Formula One. Is this oh, actually Formula nice. One? This one yes. actually is Formula One. Uh That's so really drop funny. ship actually did come out. Okay. January or June eleventh, twenty twenty two. Or not twenty twenty two, twenty two thousand two. I was excuse like, me. wait, wait, what? Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> Last year. Oh, that's that would be amazing. Hell in a nutshell. Uh, it's a pretty good review, so I might actually look into getting that one at some point. Okay. Eternal Ring. Oh, this from is software. a from software hmm. game. Interesting. I was hmm. gonna say, wasn't this their first quote-unquote Souls like before they came out with Dark Souls? Well, no, because they had a uh, Demon Souls first. Well, I know, but it, like before they started the Souls series, like it's a similar game, just a different franchise, from what I understand. Uh, I really don't know, to be honest. I actually don't know anything about Eternal Ring. But I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, based off this, it's a, a first-person game. So I'm not yeah. entirely sure. I'm not but sure that's, either. But that's interesting that they made, like, another game. Especially one that I haven't heard of. Yeah, I remember seeing some kind of YouTube video that was talking briefly about it. I don't know much about the game itself, though. Oh, wait. That'd be fun. wait, I think I did hear something about this. Isn't this a game where, like, you have to, like, create rings or something? I want to say, like, Maybe. Josh Drive Hayes did a video on this. I wouldn't be surprised that if we did. watched. I'm pretty sure we watched that one together. We might have. Because that's probably how we both know about it. And have seen probably. a video on it, specifically. Because I don't think we would watch Josh Drive Hayes, like, separately, unless it's a game that one of us played and the other wants to play, right? Yeah. So I don't think we'd watch it separately. So I'm pretty sure we watched this one together when it came out. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Because, yeah, I watch a lot of his clips. I don't watch a lot of his actual longer videos unless we're watching them together for the most part. Yeah. See, I, I kind of... I'll, well, I don't really watch his clips. I do want to watch Josh Strife uh, says at some point. Because he make it yeah. sound really fun. I kind of want to watch some. But uh, I, I do... <laughs> If I know it's a game that I've played that you want to play but haven't yet, I might check it out. Check it out. I will admit. I'm sorry, yeah. Megan. Please no hate. But it I don't. Fine. But I don't do it if it's like a game we played together or, or a game we both played or like a game that we both intend to play, right? Yeah. Or if a video came out and you're like, hey, I just want to watch it with you later. I'd wait. Yeah. Yeah. Another from software That's game, ever Grace. I haven't heard of this one. Nah. Let me see. So From Software was pumping a lot more games than I thought they did. 
Yeah. Oh, this maybe one looks this very is the one I was thinking of. This one does look very Souls-like already. Including the stamina gauge. Good old from soft never changes. I mean, that is true. This does seem more similar. Yeah, maybe this is the one I was thinking of. Yeah, this could have been a prototype Demon Souls. Uh, yeah. Mediocre to poor reviews. So this one didn't yeah, do like as well. Yeah, like it does look pretty plank or janky. That's the word I'm looking for. I mean, it seems like it's Dark Souls and Demon Souls if it didn't have like good movement mechanics. Yeah. Because I'm not really seeing good Making movement games mechanics. Making 3D is hard. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Although this one seems to be more story focused, which is kind of interesting. Because, I mean, not that there's not story in the Souls game, but it's very much told through the lore rather than directly to the player. Yeah, like it's told through the lore, the environment, and the items you pick up, right? Like, there aren't really yeah. any cutscene cutscenes. Driving a motion Driving type S. Motion type S. It's a square Wait, game. Wait, square published game. a racing game? Apparently. That's a bit wow, different. Wow, okay. That is really different. I've mm. never seen anything that wasn't like a a JRPG or like some kind of action game from Square. I'm going to have a look and see what this one's about. Built by Escape, a subsidiary of Square. Oh, it, was, okay. it was Square's first release for the PlayStation 2. Okay. After criticisms of the game's handling, which would be a bad thing for a racing game, you want it to handle good. Yeah. Uh, the international versions feature revised controls and additional contents and was released in January 2001. Okay. So basically, if we ever get it, get an A for sure. Because apparently the Japanese one isn't as good. I mean, that makes sense. A racing game handling is probably the most important part about the game. If you get that wrong, the game's just bad. No, oh, yeah, definitely, right? But yeah, I didn't know they did, a, they did a racing game. That's very different. I didn't know that either, but I know Square does publish games for a lot of other third-party studios. So I guess it doesn't surprise me. I just don't remember hearing anything about this one. But to be fair, I am not really in the, the racing game fandom, so I don't really talk with other people that play these games a lot. I mean, same. I don't really know anybody that plays racing games, to be honest. I play them very casually, like Mario Kart. <laughs> I mean, yeah, same. Like, I mean, I, I played my share of Mario Kart. Uh, I did play, like, some racing games, but not many. Yeah, like, honestly, the only ones I remember playing a lot of would be Crash Team Racing and Nitro Fueled and, like, SRS Racing on the PS2. <laughs> but that was kind of like a Need for Speed clone. Ah, uh, Keston. Ah, uh, nice. So, it's a game that I'm very familiar with that I probably should honestly show off to you someday, Megan. Yeah. Uh, Because I actually picked up Keston, eh, like, what, a year ago now? Roughly a year ago, yeah. And I've, I've been wanting to get to it, but you, you you guys know how it is. It's always a time thing. It's always too it's much always. time. Like, yeah, <laughs> like always, right? Like, not enough time to play games. Especially if I'm trying to show them off on stream or something, right? Uh, well, yeah, and then you got all this new stuff coming out too, right? That you want to show off. Yeah, exactly, right? So to explain Kessin, because I think Kessin's really funny in, in this regard. Is like it's a historical Japanese, well, quote unquote, like historical ish, uh, Jap like game that takes place during the Japanese and Goku Jirai period, where you have Tokugawa and um, uh, Tori 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 I don't remember who the other guy is for some reason. I know it's like Tokugawa and like whoever his main, not like not Nobunaga, but whoever his main rival would, rival would have been after Nobunaga, because it's like basically at the end of the Sengoku Jirai period. But the thing with Kesson is the guy that the director literally said that he wanted to make it more like a movie-ish kind of game. But it's basically like an RTS game where like you send your dudes against each other. <laughs> but like it, it, it he like it, it's a game that that has a heavy focus on like story, right? Let's see, like this is pretty cool. 
We get little cutscenes during the combat. Um, like even in the manual, like if you look at the manual, there's a whole novel, like in the first few pages, right? To explain cool. more of the background, like it's actually really impressive. Uh, yeah. But I really like Kessen like a lot. <laughs> I played it a lot when I was younger, and I was really happy to to buy it. And that game has like multiple endings too. I think. I think it has like an ending for Tokugawa. And then when you beat the Tokugawa campaign, it's like, oh, alternate history? What if the other guys won? And then you play through their story, which is pretty neat. That is cool. Yeah, I don't remember who Tokugawa fights in this. I want to say it's like... Toyotomi Hideyoshi, I think, but I don't actually recall. It's like, something about that doesn't seem correct to me. So I'm going to look it up while we look <laughs> at Swing Away. Swing Away. And I'm going to feel really dumb uh, when I find out who it is. Oh, it's a golf game. That makes a lot of sense. It does. That's true. I guess this probably would have been about the peak popular. Oh, but also, I can see there being a lot of golf caps. Yeah. Okay, so I was technically correct because he's fighting the, the Toriyotomi clan. But it's Ishida mm -hmm. Mitsunari, who is the main oh, okay. antagonist. Because he is the guardian and protector of the Toyotomi clan. So I was technically correct, but I, I knew something was off. Because I'm like, I don't remember it being like a Toyotomi who you fight. Yeah. So I don't know. It's kind of neat. I've not played Kessen 2 or Kessen 3, by the way. But I think Kessen 2 and 3, I think, are very different. In the sense that they they kind of pull a Dynasty Warriors and they like incorporate magic and stuff. Huh. So it becomes much less historical and more, hey, here's a bunch of weird stuff that happens, right? Which I'm sure is still, I mean, fun. still fun. Yeah, like it's still fun, but I'm sure back then I was, well, back then I may not, I may not have even known like Kissing 2 is a thing. I'm not too sure. Or maybe I saw it and was like turned off by something in regards to it. I don't know. I, know, I, I never played Kissing 2, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Kissing 1, love though. Would love to play it on stream sometime. And show it off to Megan. Like, you know, maybe even before stream. I don't know. Let's see. Depends what I she mean, wants. I would be curious sometime. I just don't feel like it'd be a game I would probably want to play myself. <laughs> Fair. You know, Kissing is one of those games that I think you, you would look at me and say, hey... Matt, why do you know about all these obscure video games? Because I'm pretty sure Kitson kind of falls into that. I mean, it does. You know about a lot of obscure video games. Creators 3 and 4. Hmm. hmm. Both at the same time. It's a bit interesting. Is there like... maybe they did a combo pack? I was going to say, was there a combo pack? I mean, I guess it's possible this could be a port, maybe, and they put them together. I mean, it could be. I mean, they might have been arcade games before. Maybe they decided to put them on the same disc. Yeah, I don't know, man. Konami's weird, right? So, well, they, they're weird now. They weren't as weird back then, I guess. Yeah. Because nowadays it'd be like, oh, yeah, this was a pachinko machine for like 10 years and we turned it into a video game. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All about their pachinko now are Konami. Although now we're getting more Silent Hill, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna reserve judgment. I mean, if they're starting to work on game development because they're worried about their IPs losing value, I could see them doing that even for like Castlevania or like, oh, uh, well, I guess Metal Gear Solid. They got the ports coming too. Mm, true. I, I, yeah, and they're remaking um, Snake Eater. Yeah. Right, which we saw in the last. What was it? PlayStation, PlayStation showcase? showcase, yeah. So that's cool. So you're right. Maybe it is because they can sense well their IPs are losing value. Nobody cares that they're pachinko machines. Let's actually make some video games again. Yeah. I just hope the games do well because I don't want Konami to be like, okay, well, they didn't do well. Clearly, nobody wants them anymore. Cancel, right? <laughs> we'll never see the IPs again. You know what I mean? That yeah. will happen if the games don't sell. 
you know like if the snake eater remake doesn't sell which it will but if it gets like even negative reviews which i don't think it would unless they heavily mess that up somehow then yeah. uh it'll, it'll do then it, like if they somehow mess it up and it's just bad and it gets bad reviews they probably would just pull the plug on the whole series probably i'm sure they've done that in the past with a lot of these games probably and i know for a fact they would do that with silent hill if, if it doesn't sell well yeah because like i love silent hill but I, I i doubt konami has like a lot of love for silent hill themselves right yeah didn't like most of the games in silent hill like past three really not sell that well um yeah i believe so because like you had four which is kind of a black sheep of silent hill i think it's actually pretty all right i'm not gonna lie but we'll get to that probably whenever i get around to playing it uh which yeah. honestly might not even be that too far away i don't know um because silent <laughs> hill 4 was considered not the greatest um then after that you had like i think silent hill origins which was like a psp or a Vita game. It was one, one like exclusive. Yeah. And it was okay, but and then it got ported. I actually have the port on PS2, which is kind of neat. Okay. Um. But yeah, I don't think it did really all that well. And then you had Homecoming, which I know everybody didn't like. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, you had like what Downpour. I believe so. And I, I'm pretty sure people didn't like Downpour. I think there was another one, too, that people didn't like. But yeah, Shattered Silent... Memories? Yeah, well, yeah, a lot of people didn't like Shattered Memories as well. Man, I should buy that one. <laughs> and uh, I, know, I I've seen gameplay of it, and it actually doesn't seem terrible. So I'm just kind of... I feel like I should play it. It's interesting, by the way, Street Fighter EX3. But it doesn't really seem like a Street Fighter in this bit. Maybe this is Not like a really. minigame? Maybe? Like, see, it's Shattered Memories. Battle. And then I think you had another one. I don't remember. I don't remember how many Silent Hills happened. But yeah, after three, they heavily fell off. In terms of popularity. Which, as I yeah. stated before, I find really funny because Resident Evil kind of did the opposite. Where, well, I mean, six wasn't really considered that good. But whereas like Silent Hill just started hitting like loss after loss after loss. Resident Evil was like, oh, here's four. Super great. Here's five. That's okay. Six. Meh. But then seven, like knock it out of the park, you know? <laughs> Apparently. I, so I've heard. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, I don't know. They just kind of went in opposite directions. But I'm hoping Silent Hill makes a proper comeback. I do love Silent Hill. I do want to play it again. The series, I mean. Well, I say the series. I mean, I played Silent Hill 1, 2, and 3, and 4. I'm playing... Well, no, that's a lie. I played some Homecoming, but I never actually finished Homecoming. This seems really interesting for a Street Fighter, doesn't it? Yeah, it kind of reminds me, I think, of Marvel vs. Capcom that kind of does the whole tag-in, tag-out system. It seems like they were trying to see if they could hit into that niche. Yeah, kind of. Then you have Dead or Alive 2. Classic. You know, what can you really say about it, right? I'm not so just I've saying that for Dead the or Alive game, But I do remember seeing so many ads, like, way back when for, like, Dead or Alive Volleyball. And that's all I think of when I see the franchise now. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, right? Like, Dead or Alive had a lot of spin-offs, right? Like, they had spin-offs for days, right? Yeah. Where it's like, oh, here's beach volleyball. Here's, like, uh, like what, what were the other ones they had? They had volleyball was, like, their main one. I want to say they had, like, yeah. a golf game, but I, I could be wrong about that. I think they had a couple. I don't think it was just beach volleyball. I, I'm pretty sure there was a couple, but I can't recall any of the other ones. And then, you know, of course, they had their fighting game. Yeah. The character models in this actually look pretty good. They do. Uh, they definitely do. To be fair, I feel oh. like that's part of the, like, <laughs> appeal with Dead or Alive is the fact that, like, the character models are good. Like, with their yeah. booba and everything, right? 
I'm not, I'm not saying that because I'm one of those people that's like, oh, booba and video game. But like, legitimately, I feel like that they really leaned into that, right? They did. Because yeah, it had, isn't this one of the first-ish games that had like really good jiggle physics on their models? I think so. I want to say that might be correct, but I'm not too sure. Okay, oh. Man, you know what? I want to, you know what? When, when does uh, Fatal Frame come out? Is that 2001? Because I'm thinking about it. I believe it, so it's I, 2001, yeah. Because I want to see Fatal Frame in this, because I love Fatal Frame. That's Is that a game. Konami game too? I believe so. Okay. I, I don't actually recall, but I believe it's a Konami game. Yeah, because I've heard the Fiddle Frame games are really good, but I have personally not played any of them. I only know basically about the premise. Dude, Fatal Frame One is like one of the one of the like I'm like I'm not gonna claim to be like oh I'm a big tough guy games don't scare me they actually do uh, doesn't happen <laughs> as much on stream but games do creep me out a lot depending on the game Ah, oh, Fantavision I have this one mm, okay it's like a game where you like shoot fireworks and they like explode it's about the like, game points very basic but like really interesting I guess we haven't really seen a lot of like arcade games huh. Yeah. Okay, well, since it's just Fantavision, I'm going to try to finish my thought real quick. So, yeah. Yeah, because there's like, this one bit in Fatal Frame 1 where, like, I'm just playing it and I'm having a good time. And then I'm not going to say what, because I want Megan to experience it herself. Right? Mm hmm. Where just, like, something really unexpected happens and a new, like, enemy shows up. Oh, okay. And it's like, you're just, like, going around. You've been through this area, like, tons before then all of a sudden you just hear this like really loud like actually really scary scream and then the oh. enemy is just there and it's like oh my god like i remember pausing the game and heavily contemplating if i wanted to play it <laughs> anymore that night because i was playing it like in the dead of night too i'm pretty sure i mean that's fair honestly the only time i remember doing that would have been when i got to a certain part in until dawn I oh, won't really? say in case anyone hasn't actually seen the, the let's play we did. But. I mean, fair, which you should watch, by the way. But yeah, there's like one thing relatively early in the game that happens. I made a choice and I, I, it didn't go out the way I thought it did. And I'm just mm. like, oh, I can't play anymore tonight. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I think you talked about that during the let's play, actually. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. So, Yay! Yay! They did it! God, I need to play this. This doesn't look like it'd be fun if it's a little basic. Yeah, like but... it's fun. Like it's basic. Like I wouldn't spend like full price on it, to be fair. Which I didn't. I got it at like a pawn shop, I'm pretty sure. But I like the cover. Okay. I like the box art. It has fireworks on it. I was like, how do you make a game based around that? It's neat. I think I think I've seen the box art, yeah. I mean I hope so, because probably you saw it when I was putting the games away, I imagine. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> maybe not. But I do have it, so you know. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll have to try it sometime. Yeah, you should. You know, I still Megan... have to wonder how the the conversation of this game came up. It's just like, oh, we want to make a game. Well, what do we do? Let's make it about blowing up fireworks. Yeah, you're right. That is kind of random, isn't it? A little bit. Man, IQ Remix. Yeah, we saw this game last year, didn't we? But now it's, it's the remix version of it, I guess. I believe so, yeah. So I'm guessing it has, like, new levels, probably? Probably, maybe new mechanics too, because I don't remember seeing differently colored blocks like that. Uh, I don't recall. Yeah, it's always some neat too. Um, don't know if or when I would ever get it, mind you, but it seems neat. 
I think I saw this one at a GDQ once. I think so. You know, I will say this game it does seem really creative. Like I know it's it's just like bo like blocks like moving, but I don't yeah. know. I, it's neat, right? I like it. It does seem like a pretty okay. unique puzzle mechanic. I do like games like that. Yeah. I have a Tekken Tag Tournament. Yeah, I never really play, yeah. played much Tekken. I think we've mentioned this before with like other Tekkens. I, I never really played much Tekken. Sam, yeah, I wanna, I've never I wanna... really played any of them. Yeah, I want to start getting good at fighting games. I want to at least like try, right? I want to like practice and stuff and like actually get decent. Cause my friend Todd, he's been playing Street Fighter Six a lot. He makes it look really fun. And he's always done that with every fighting game I've seen him play. He makes it look really fun. So I want to actually like <laughs> practice and get good. So I can justify picking up Street Fighter Six. I mean, that's fair. I think that would be fun if you wanted to do that. Yeah. My brother actually sent me a clip of him winning in Street Fighter 6 with like 1 HP the other day. <laughs> oh really? Okay, that's very funny. Yeah. Well, I don't know, maybe we should get your get your brother around and have him fight the boy, Tatsuya himself. Yeah. I don't know how much he <laughs> plays fighting games. I know he has gone on and off playing a few fighting games over the years. He plays them a decent amount, I would say. Probably not as much as Tots, though. Uh, probably not as much as Tots, because... Tots sometimes doesn't have as much of a life. No offense, Tots, if you ever watch this. But <laughs> but look, look, Tots. You do you do play a lot of fun games sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing uh, yeah. wrong with that. Everyone has their own genre of game they like. I like my RPGs, so I play a lot of RPGs. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm honestly surprised though. I thought you were gonna say, "No, Matt. I want my brother to be hanging out with your friends." I mean, <laughs> I don't have a problem with it. I don't know if he'd want to, but I mean, fair. Yeah. Uh, I just know Todd's likes playing with people that he actually can like talk to as well. Yeah. Because every time, uh, every time I've either brought up or something. Like, even the last time I mentioned it, I think I mentioned it like a couple nights ago, where I was like, Toss, you always make it look good. I'm really tempted to pick up Street Fighter 6. But I kind of think <laughs> I, might get, I might get good at Guilty Gear Strive first, because I have Guilty Gear Strive, that he actually got me. Yeah. Um, and so he was like, well, yeah, pick up Street Fighter 6 or play Guilty Gear Strive. I don't care. I'll play in either one. <laughs> and he's very much like, if you're not too sure, like, how to play the game, he will give you really good advice and he will just kind of teach you like casually yeah but he's actually That's a really good. good teacher uh so Ridge racer 5 uh, i never really played much of the ridge racer games yeah i've never think. played any of them <laughs> yeah i think it's been a long time since the last ridge racer came out though I mean, probably just because the last time one came out that I recall became a big meme. So they maybe were just like, well, okay, we'll, we'll leave it. Well, no, actually, I think another one came out after that, to be fair, because I think they played on that mm -hmm. meme and joke. Okay. Uh, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's a very big franchise anymore, just because you have so many other ones. You have Need for Speed that's still going. You have... Um, uh, Gran Turismo. Yeah, Formula One for her uh, Forza. Yeah, yeah, Forza. Like, Grid Racer, I'm sure, isn't bad, but I, I'm sure Ridge Racer can't really compete as well with those ones, right? Yeah, because I think the last one I remember coming out, I think, was seven. But again, I've never played any of them.
but I also don't know. I, I don't keep up on racing games as much, so I could be incredibly wrong for all I know, right? Yeah, I, I haven't played an actual racing game in a really long time, aside from Mario Kart casually. <laughs> like Probably I dabbled. The last time I played would have been Nitro Fueled. Yeah, like, I mean, I've dabbled in um, racing games. Because, like, I, I play, I, occasionally I get in the mood to play, um, what's it called? Like, fuck, what's it called? It's called, like, Project. Did Pac Man? Yeah, maybe Project Cars, yeah. Okay, that's really funny. That is pretty good. I hope you're not talking about me playing Project Cars. No, I just saw Pac the Pac Man logo and it's like <laughs> eating the little note cards, and he's playing as Pac Man. That's hilarious. It is pretty funny. Honestly, that would be really funny if they made like a full on Pac Man racing game. That would be. I don't know how they. I don't know what characters they'd use. Mind you, because you have the ghosts, you have Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man. I mean, I'd probably play as one of the ghosts too. I read story. Texture, Texture enhancement. enhancement. Hmm. I don't really mean by that. They had a, a port on PS2, or is this just when you play it on a PS2? This might be when you play it on PS2. Well, that's yeah. kind of cool. I never really knew that was a thing. Because our type Delta, like, what's what did our type Delta come out on? In Vagrant Story. Yeah, because Vagrant Story is a PS1 game. So yeah, I guess it had um, a couple of... I, I guess the textures looked a little bit better. Going hmm. from PS1 to PS2. That's interesting. I never knew that's about really that. Cool. So it kind of gives you... Gave you more of a reason to just like actually play it on... Uh, a PS2 instead, I guess. It's too bad that game is really hard to find. Yeah. Well, yeah, anyway, that's how that's how some games are, I suppose. Yeah, um, like I've heard really good things about it, but it's just it had very little sales, so copies are very expensive. So. Oh, excuse, excuse me, I'm I'm very tired now. So, um. <laughs> E3 2000. Now we're not done yet, mind you. We're not done. We still have, we still have uh, this footage to go through, uh, like the actual show floor footage, because I think it'd be fun. And I want to show Halo Combat Evolved, because I think that's you know just a, a very yeah. much a historical moment in terms of video games. And I want to I want to see the Metal Gear Solid thing, like with the actual people reacting to it, right? Because I think this is what you uh, talked about before. Yeah, I think so. So I kind of want to want to see that as well. But for showing off all the games and stuff, who do you think had the better lineup? Mm, definitely the PS2. It had a lot more variety, and even like the games we saw at the same genres, like the sports games and the racing games, just looked better than the Dreamcast games. There was a couple games on the Dreamcast that looked pretty alright. Like I, I think in terms of the racing games, I think the Wacky Racers looked pretty good. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it definitely didn't compare to all the stuff the PS2 had. And then, like, the N64 also had a lot of really good games coming out this time, too. Yeah. And then they showed off a lot of uh, PS1 games, too, at the start. Didn't I? Well, I say a lot of. I don't actually remember how many there were. Yeah. Um, I honestly... Let me think about that for a moment. I would say... Legitimately, like... either ps1 or ps2 dude like i'm not gonna lie the like n64 was definitely up there as well because like let me yeah. just have a little peek here let me give myself hold on actually load please let me give myself a bit of a, a bit of a refresher on like ps2 because they had the crash thing you had like ddr you had a docu profile the legend of dragoon spider-man see they had a lot of good ones on the playstation one Chrono That's Cross, true, IMO, Legend of Mana. Legend of Mana. Parasite Eve 2. So legitimately, like, I mean, it, it's either between play, PS1 or PS2 for me personally, right? 
Yeah. Um, I like a lot of the PS1 games that came out. I liked a lot of the PS2 ones that we saw as well, mind you. But fucking Monster Rancher, Megan. You know? Like, That's true. There is a yeah. lot of really good games that came out on PS1. Yeah. So, like, Nintendo had a good showing with, like, Conquer and Mario, Paper Mario and, and stuff. But uh, if I had to pick, like, if we're just doing the thing where it's, like, oh, who won Nintendo, Sony, or, like, Sega, Sony for sure, right? Yeah. Um, If I had to pick between, like, PS1 and PS2, which I never thought I'd have to do, um, Ooh. it'd be PS1, because, like, they had a lot of bopping games, dude, yeah. Well, I think that just makes sense because a lot of the games coming out this time on the PS1 would have been stuff that's been in development for a while. And it's also stuff that developers, well, for the most part, it probably kind of figured out the technology a little bit better. So the games probably just look better in general. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. So, yeah, Sony won my E3 2000. I don't think we've actually, well, because we haven't really seen... Uh, a lot of these games kind of like in a row before I, I i don't do we do it in 99 we didn't do it in 99 right because 99 I, I don't believe so no 99 they had but i didn't find it in time so i didn't uh, do that one so i don't think we've actually done like a proper winner or loser yet which i wanted to kind of start doing when we hit the conferences right yeah because i figure the conferences you got to pick like who's the winner and loser for that year right as it's tradition yeah. you know uh, some of them will be harder than others, because I know there's one year, which I mentioned before, which I think is the motion control year, where I think they all kind of sucked ass. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, we'll need to we'll need to see when we actually get there. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't really expecting to do like a winner or loser thing for this one, but Sony for sure. P PS1 in particular for me. So you're still sticking with the uh, PS2? I think you've convinced me. I think PS1 probably wins this year. I mean, fair. But you can we can also just say, like, Sony won. Because, like... Well, yeah, Sony yeah. won overall. But yeah. I still think, at least looking at some of the games here now, like, there was a lot of really good mm. PS1 games. And, I mean, there was some decent PS2, but nothing, like, super substantial. Yeah, but, I mean, hey, you Pikachu could, like, tip the scales, man. I don't know. No. So, yeah, Dreamcast, though, unfortunately, just kind of the loser, right? They had some good yeah. games, to be fair, but they didn't have enough that would, like, make me interested, right? Yeah. And, like, I know I'm not the be-all, end-all for, like, video games here, <laughs> but, like, I don't know, Dreamcast just didn't really have anything that I would personally try to get for this Yeah, year, it had least. too many of the same type of games, games that are already available in other systems. It didn't have like, enough unique stuff to draw people to. It didn't even have a Sonic game, did it? Um, I don't believe so. Like, I don't know. To me, that just seems a little weird. Like, I don't know. Like, the only unique games I really remember seeing would have been, like, Jitsu Radio and Shenmue. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're correct. Oh, Sonic Adventure 2. Oh, it's not, yeah, oh that's okay. Right. Sonic yeah. Adventure 2. That's true. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that one. I did. Okay, um, that's Majora. my mistake. Yeah, see, see, I love Majora, but even with that, though, PS1 just had so many more, like, quality, super good quality get, the games. PS1, I don't know if it's a PS2. PS1 had so many so, so many good quality games. I don't know. So, Sony is my winner, PS1 in particular. Yeah. Um, you are the same. Yeah, you changed and, my opinion. <laughs> yeah, and Sega, the Dreamcast, my loser for the year. Yeah. Okay, we we seem like we're yeah. I'm curious if we'll we'll change it later. Uh, like, oh, yeah, I'm sure we will. As in, like, if we won't be on the same page, like a bit later, I could kind of see that. Yeah, I'm assuming that will probably happen once we get more of the Xbox games in, just because, like, aside from the major franchises, I don't really know a lot about like Xbox exclusive games. Yeah, that's fair. So, yeah, you know, we'll probably. It not pick the same ones once we actually get to the conferences, but I find it really I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know anybody that would really disagree though, right? Like with this year, at the very least, you know? Like unless you're very nostalgic for like Conquer or Hey You Pikachu or something. Like, I yeah. don't know. I like Legend of the Dragoon, literally Spider-Man, literally 
Uh, well, I don't know anything about Dragon Valor. I can't say that. But like, Dreads of Fate, I think is considered good. Chrono Cross, some would argue, but I like it, so deal with it. <laughs> uh, Legend of Mana, right? So like, Parasite Eve two. See, it's just so many boppers, right? And then you get some losers yeah. like Survivor. But you know, besides <laughs> that, Monster Rancher two. Right, Lexi. It's just so many good games. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna. I, I could probably ramble on about this for. Uh, another couple hours so I should we should probably call it there what do you think yeah that sounds like a good idea <laughs> okay so thank you very much everybody for watching we hope you all enjoyed today but for now it is time we cue the outro Greg out and we shall catch you guys later bye